So we are conducting, as we speak, a phase one clinical trial in men and women with solid cancers. And we expect this phase one trial to be completed soon. A phase one trial is a dose finding trial, so it's a safety trial. I start with a very, very low dose of the drug and we build up to doses in successive patients to find what we believe to be a safe dose to take on for further testing in other trials and in other combinations with other anti-cancer drugs. We're actually quite encouraged by the fact that uh, this drug mechanistically could work in various kinds of cancers and to this end we're starting to work with other cancer centers in multi-center studies and we together with the uh, University of California in Los Angeles, this is UCLA, uh, we have uh, established a collaboration and we've established a phase two trial which is what we call an, an efficacy trial. So we're going to see if we can get tumor shrinkage uh, by using DCA in women with advanced breast cancers and for men and women with a common kind of lung cancer called non-small cell carcinoma of the lung. And we expect this to be completed soon. Once that study is completed, we will be reviewing our results and we'll be posting our next steps on our website. So uh, once again, at present, we uh, are just finishing up the phase one study in advanced cancers and solid cancers. And at present, there are no other clinical trials open in any. So I think that's what we have to say. So I think we're open for questions. Wow. So if anybody has any questions from the table? Dr. Matthew, my name is Trish Esther, works from CBC Radio. Can you tell us how many people are involved in the trial that's underway right now? Well, hello, Trish. We have uh, started this trial at, at the University of Alberta to discover the appropriate dose of DCA to use in the next step trials. And to date, we have treated 18 patients on the phase one clinical trial where we have started with a very low dose and brought the dose up twice to achieve what we think to be a, a safe dose. We're seeing patients that are able to, to tolerate this without particular problems that would, would lead us to, uh, to be concerned. Uh, we are entering more patients on it at what we believe to be the safe dose level, and we need a further six patients at that level for this uh, phase one trial to be completed. Police? start with, with, the, uh, with the patients that are doing very well. Um, they, uh, they responded very well to therapy. Now, I have to be very, very careful because we can't come to any, any, really any conclusions with regards to efficacy with this small number of patients. The other, the other uh, factor that's very, very important is there are as I mentioned, there are four varieties within this umbrella of glioblastoma multiforme, and they, they are genetically very, very different, and they could respond very well to one form of therapy, not at all to another form of therapy. So, so five patients, really, we have to be very, very careful in drawing any conclusions. All I can say is that at 30 months, these patients have been the two patients have been quite stable. Uh, one developed a tumor cyst in the new part of the surgery uh, just within the last week. But this is very, very good. Uh, we, I remind you that the mean survival is 14.6 months. So that, that really is, is sort of our, our meter, our metric to go by. But uh, we were more concerned about determining, and this is where Dr. Michalakis' lab is so, so important in that uh, when, when we would take a biopsy of tissue before the patients were placed on DCA, and then if the patients had to have recurrent surgery for progression or drainage of tumor cyst, then we had the opportunity to look at those cells after they were treated with DCA. And this is very, very rarely done in clinical trials today. So, so we have this advantage of, of working 
uh, within the Department of Surgery, Neurosurgery, and within the Department of Medicine. And, uh, and we, this collaboration has given us very vital information. So I think we have to stress the mechanisms of, of the therapy and how DCA works. And this is the important message. And we want to inspire other centers to jump on the bandwagon and look at modifying or manipulating <coughs> the metabolism of cancer cell, which is so different than normal cells. So I, I think that's the message we're trying to relate to you today, not, not the, the therapeutic aspect. And that's more important than you can imagine at this point, because just think of that, it appears that we have cured cancer in animals. Every month there is a cure uh, for cancer in animals, but in humans we are doing very poorly. And a part of that is that often what appears to be the mechanism in the control environment of an animal model or in the lab has nothing to do with the complex environment of a human being. So this is why uh, when an MIT researcher from one of the most uh, prestigious uh, cancer institutes, the Koch Institute at MIT, writing this editorial about work, he chose that as the major strength of our trial. The fact that we're able to take tissue before and after something that is not done adequately or at all in, in trials because people are often caught into did it work did it, and, and lose the fact that whether it works or not, if you don't know what it's doing to the human body, you're not in a good start. So in addition to, and maybe you don't have these numbers, but in addition to the five and then the 49 that you have studied, do you have any idea the numbers involved through the other institutions? How many patients have been studied sort of all together? This is the first study uh, on humans with DCA, so um, uh, there hasn't been any, okay. any recent uh, trial on DCA, except the UCLA arm. I believe that there is stars in the At present, in Los Angeles, together with us, they've enrolled three patients so far in the clinical trial. So it's, again, early days. Uh, we are cautiously optimistic, but we don't have outcomes on those patients. And you, you say that this is a quite a small study. So despite that, you seem to still be fairly confident that you're, you're moving things in the right direction. So looking ahead, then, since the numbers you know, seem to be still too, sort of too small to draw any major conclusions. How optimistic are you to sort of take this to the next level then? Well, of course, we're, we're not confident, as you said. Okay. We're optimistic. So we, we challenges like that, you have to do one thing at a time. And, and when we did our, our, our animal work, a lot of people said that you're never going to move that to a human being. You're giving false hope. So we're proving that we made the first little step. And although we don't know if we will be able to make step number three, we're confident we're going to make step number two. And we'll see from there. So you are confident? That we're going to make the next step. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.